You know, talking to most people who know a little bit about Malaysia, the general consensus seems to be that vegan food and Malaysian food don't really get along. Now, I don't know if you know this about me, but back in the day, I used to produce a range of vegan Malaysian meals that were distributed by a popular vegan food chain here in Sydney. So even though I'm not personally vegan, I do know a little bit about vegan Malaysian recipes and also how to tweak the ones that aren't vegan so that they become vegan friendly. In this first episode of Street Food Journeys Malaysia plant-based edition, we're going to show you how to rework a couple of Penang's iconic dishes including Penang Char Kui Tiao and Basen Bo so that they are vegan and we'll also show you how to make a popular Penang dessert called Bubo Kacang Hijau or Green Bean Porridge very very delicious which is naturally vegan Penang Char Kui Tiao, for those who don't know, it is a stir-fried rice noodle dish. The Penang version uses a narrow fresh rice noodle. Now, uh, the sauce uh, can be a number of different iterations. I'm going to show you some of these ingredients. Cooking caramel, this is what it looks like. It, it's actually like a thick, dark soy sauce. So light soy sauce. Uh, my Char Kui Tiao contains uh, chicken stock granules. And when I make the vegan version, I use uh, mushroom seasoning, okay, which is basically the vegetarian version of chicken granules. Uh, if you can't get a hold of it, just get your favorite uh, vegetarian like stock powder or stock cube, okay? Uh, so that's that. Salt and sugar, and you brew the sauce. You just simmer it till everything's dissolved, and you end up with, like me here, uh, <laughs> I'll put it in a jar. Uh, once it's cooled down, vegan CKT sauce, okay? And then you can just store it in your fridge and then just whip it out and use it and it'll last for months and months, okay? What are we going to do about the egg, right? Uh, I have sold vegan chocolate gel, but when I did that, Back in the day, I would do it without egg, okay? So it would be like you ordering a chocolate deal without egg. But today, what we're going to do, we're going to make an uh, egg substitute out of, this is, uh, this is Bisan flour, and you can find this in Indian grocery stores here in Australia, okay? It's uh, Bisan or gram flour. Uh, the other thing we want is cornstarch, okay? You can use cornstarch, you can use uh, potato starch, you can use tapioca starch. So these two combined, we're going to uh, make like an eggy effect in your char kway diao, okay? Uh, as far as the protein, typically in a char kway diao, uh, non-vegan version, you'll have prawns, you'll have, you might have Chinese sausage, you might have fish cake slices, uh, some places I've eaten had like crab meat and all that, right? Um, and sometimes, like I said, you know, they might use pork lard in their cooking, right? So obviously we're using vegetable oil and uh, as far as the protein, I have some mushrooms here. You want some bean sprouts. I think most people would be familiar with bean sprouts and you want some garlic chives, okay? So these are not like your typical um, Western chives that you put on your uh, baked potato sour cream. Okay, these are garlic chives, what we call kujai uh, in Malay or gao uh, choy in Cantonese. Okay, so those are the ingredients you want. And let me just show you the noodles. So these are the noodles that I'm using. Like I said, here in Australia, depending on which part of Australia you're in a pretty metro area like I am here in Sydney, you should be able to find these noodles. They're more opaque and the type of noodle used in Penang Char Kui Tiao, but they're, they're not bad, right? Um, if you can't get a hold of this, if you can't get fresh rice noodles and you can only get dry noodles, then just follow the instructions on the packet on how to reconstitute it, okay? I can show you how to make these noodles yourself, but we don't have time today. Uh, the other thing, final thing, yeah, uh, this is optional. This is preserved radish. Again, something you should be able to find in Asian grocery stores. What it is, is a radish that's been preserved with sugar and salt. So just sprinkle a little bit in your stir fry. It just gives it that kind of like a, that burst of flavor, you know. Uh, okay, so we've got all these and we've got some minced garlic. And we're going to whip out some oil. And we're going to fry all this up.
We're just going with a little camping stove. When I do this for my business, obviously I don't use a camping stove. This is, uh, this is the kind of wok I use for stir frying, okay? There are two general types of woks that I would make sure I have in my pantry, in my kitchen. This is one of them. Um, as far as these two here, these two flowers, what we're going to do is we're going to mix them into a batter with some water, okay? So this is the Bisan flour, and I'm just going to stick a bit here and just add some cold water to this and beat it up. So this is going to replicate the egg yolk, whereas the cornstarch is going to replicate the egg white. Okay, so this is the cornstarch. Again, just add some water to it. Cold. Now we're going to add the oil because it's smoking. And you want to add the oil in small amounts, okay? Just small drizzles. You might end up using a fair bit of oil, but you want to start with a small amount. So we've got the noodles, we're going to add the noodles in. Okay, and then you're going to play it, you know, by, by feel how much oil to add in. Okay, and when you add, you want to add it around the perimeter. Okay, let's throw in the garlic. Now we're going to add the sauce and add, just like with the oil, you want to add the sauce in small amounts. You end up add, adding too much all at once, you're going to end up drowning the noodles and bringing down the temperature of the wok and you'll end up raising the noodles, okay? You don't want that. So don't be shy with the oil. What you want to do now is you want to just add more oil and after you shove the noodles and everything else to one side and we're going to throw in the bison batter, okay? I don't know if you can see how it's just starting to set, okay? You move the noodles back over that, don't stir it yet, okay? We're going to add the cornstarch. Now, you can add the bean sprouts and the chives and if you want the mince preserved radish, just drink it over. Bit more oil if you like. And there you go. So this is what it looks like at the end. With the char kway teow, the egg is meant to be like just slightly undercooked. That's what the starch helps to create in terms of the effect. So there you go. Give it a shot. Let me know how it turns out. If you want the recipe, make sure you sign up. Malaysianchefs.com slash street food journeys and I'll send out the recipe to you. It's going to be an e-magazine with all our vegan recipes that's going to be coming out with this series. So make sure you don't miss it, okay? Mm -hmm. Place has character, man.
put it this way, Kuala Lumpur is modern. And there's some beauty in that too. But Penang, it's like every building looks completely different. Okay, we've decided on something called Chendol, a Malaysian favorite. So, we actually have it in Indonesia too. It's this green little tapioca look-alike thing with some coconut milk drinks. It's refreshing. It looks like, look like beans too. Yeah, and they put some beans in Malaysia. In Indonesia, they don't put beans. In Malaysia, they do. Okay. So, that's the difference. So, we're going to try And it's cold. It. Yeah, cold drinks. This is a cold drink for a hot day that has tapioca and beans. Yeah. This is what I would say only in Asia. Only in Asia. Only in Asia. Let's see if you like it. <laughs> Tastes like beans. Tastes like beans. It's not bad. It doesn't taste bad. It's just like cold, sugary beans. <laughs> Let me try again. It's not bad. It's actually not bad. Wow, you finished yours. Yours half full. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Look at mine. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, I'm realizing it's so sweet. It's like full of sugar. And it's ice cold. It's kind of nice. The beans are kind of weird, but you asked me earlier, would I have this again? Maybe. <laughs> I can see myself on a hot day saying, man, I'd go over some ice channel. <laughs> I tell you what. Yeah, it's not bad. I like Ice Chendol. Mm. Hi, this is Liam Ghani here from the Model Pantry, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make pasambul, which is a street food dish from Penang, my hometown, and it's a little bit similar to gado gado, but not quite. Um, it's got its own little twist on things, crunchy, little bit of sweet and sour sauce with some peanuts in it, delicious, and yes, and I'm going to be making a vegetarian version. Okay, we're going to make our fritters first. To do this, you're going to need some self-raising flour, a little bit of water, salt and pepper, a little bit of plain oil, and ordinarily you would use some um, prawn meat to add to this. However, because we're making a vegetarian version, we're going to be using some mushrooms instead. If you're not big on mushrooms, don't worry about it. You can just leave it out. So all we're going to do is we're just going to mix all this together and then we're going to deep fry it. Okay, so I've mixed up my batter for our fritters. Uh, I've let it rest for about 10 minutes and now I'm going to deep fry it. So this is exactly what I'm after. I'm looking for some nice little crispy bits and also a few larger pieces as well. So we're just going to fry this off until both sides are nice and brown and cooked through. So my fritters are almost done. They're lovely and crispy, they're light, and the best part is, is look at all these crispy bits. The, these will be the best bits. All these yummy crispy bits are gonna add so much texture and flavor. Okay, so our fritters are done. Have a listen to this. Oh, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to fry off some bean curd. So we're done with the deep frying and our fritters, but let's just take a look at them one last time because they are kind of pretty. So we've got our deep fried bean curd and we've got our fritters. Just remember, you want to let these go back to a room temperature before you actually assemble your dish. Because remember, this is street food. So more often than not, a lot of the items are pre-made and put together at the last moment. So because our sauce is going to be hot, that's going to bring the whole thing back to life again. Okay, so. Firstly, we are going to just make a very simple 
a spice mix to fry off first. So that's basically going to be some red onion and white onion. Uh, shallots would be preferable, but if you can't get shallots, just use this instead. It, it works just as well. We've got some garlic. We've also got some dried chilies. So we're going to mix that together. And then once we fry that off, we're going to add some tamarind, some sweet potato, some sugar and some salt, and it's going to be delicious. So we're just going to fry this off until it takes a bit of color and dries out a little bit. Now remember, we're cooking the onions and the garlic. Now you will know when it's done, when it darkens slightly and the oil starts to separate and you get little bubbles. And that's when you know that the wet content has basically dried out and has separated from the oil. That's when you know you're good to go. Okay, so my spice paste is almost there. Now that that's done, I'm just gonna add some um, tamarind water. There we go. Now, I've used some um, concentrated tamarind, which I've then added to some warm water. But you can use um, whole tamarind as well, if you prefer. So there we go. It's about 750 mils. So we're just gonna let that come up to the boil. And this is where it gets exciting. Then we're gonna add our sweet potato. So our sweet potato, which I showed you earlier on, all you're gonna do is boil some sweet potato, peel them, and then pass them through a sieve. Um, or you can blend them if you like, but it does need to be quite fine. Now we're gonna add our pureed sweet potato to this, which will of course thicken it up nicely and add a sweetness to it to counteract the tamarind, but of course we're adding a bit of sugar as well. Um, you can always add a bit more sugar uh, later on. So I'm just gonna add half of my sugar for the moment. And then we're gonna bring that back up to the boil, then reduce it to a simmer and let that cook for 30 minutes. And then the sauce is done. So our vegetables, we have some blanched bean sprouts. We've got some cucumber, some egg, some boiled potato and some iceberg lettuce. Now you can obviously leave out the egg if you would like to make a vegan version of this. That would literally be the only ingredient you would have to alter to get a vegan treat out of this. There's also a few little toppings that you want to add as well. So in here, uh, roasted peanuts some sesame seeds, and also a few fried shallots. So that's going to be our garnish that goes on top of it. Let's put it all together. Got a big, nice mixing bowl here for us. So we're just going to add all of that in. Oh, you know what? Let's just go for the whole lot. There we go. Then we're going to get some of our crunchy bits. And this is my favorite part. So you don't need a chopper, but you know, it kind of makes me feel slightly more enthusiastic. And oh, listen to that. Heaven. And then we've got our some bean curd. Throw that all into the bowl. That's all in there. Give it a bit of shake. That's our gravy simmering away. A couple of ladle spoons, pour it over the top. And we're just gonna take me right back home. Now obviously you don't have to mix this uh, straight away. You can take it to the table and you can actually assemble it at the table if you'd like to. Um, but obviously you want to let the sauce kind of get into the nice crispy bits and soften it a little bit. Um, we're just going to add a little bit more sauce. Sprinkle our garnish over the top. And there we have it. Passambul. How good does that look? Fully vegetarian, almost vegan, very easily adaptable. Yeah, make it, enjoy it. It's really worth the effort. I can guarantee you that. Bobor kacang hijau or green bean porridge is a sweet which can be served hot or cold. And the great thing about it is it's already vegan. You don't have to do anything to make it vegan. Okay, so first of all, we're just going to go through some of these pulses so you can tell the difference when you go looking for them. Now, uh, this is the most common one, this is red beans, right? And as kids, we would uh, know these as red beans, and these we would know as green beans because they look similar, but they're green. But their official name is actually um, 
Hmong beans, but if you come if you're here in Australia and you see a lot of Thai desserts that mention mung bean, this is what they mean. Okay, so how is this different? Uh, the green bean, also known as mung bean, and the yellow mung bean, they're actually the same thing. So the yellow ones are the green bean with the skin off, right? So we are using this today. Now, um, what the recipes will call for you to do is to soak this overnight, for, you know, till it's soft and then you simmer it with water, sugar, pandan leaves usually and pandan leaves what I like to describe as Asian vanilla and also here's another ingredient that's very popular in Malaysian desserts this is and snacks as well this is glutinous rice or sticky rice right and again usually re recipes will call for you to soak this overnight or soak it for a few hours and my shortcut for this is to basically immerse it in boiled water fresh from the kettle and for 15 minutes and then I just transfer it into a rice cooker and cook it per normal okay so that's what I've done and with the mung beans what I usually do is pressure cook it you can pressure cook it you can slow cook it just add water and then put on your pressure cooker and pressure cook it till it's soft and with a lot of these desserts you would actually uh, want some coconut cream or coconut milk and with this particular recipe we're going to have the coconut cream in porridge itself and also separately as a topping the coconut cream for the topping what you want to do is just heat up some coconut cream in a saucepan and then you're going to just add a pinch of salt this is important because that just helps to bring out the sweetness in the overall dish Right, so this is after you've simmered it with a pinch of salt and the salt, salt dissolves, come to a boil, you can transfer it out and set it aside and use it as a topping. So let's have a look. This is skipping the whole soaking for eight hour process. I just threw it in the pressure cooker, pressure cooked it for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, right? And same with the rice skipping the soaking process kind of i soaked it for 15 minutes in boiling water and then just transfer it into the rice cooker and add up more water and a pinch of salt and voila so this is your sticky rice and now what we want to do this is we're going to cook it so it's got some water i'm going to add more water to this more water if you like you can add some of the sticky rice in here or you can serve the sticky rice separately or you can do a bit of both right so let's add a bit of sticky rice here just kind of helps to balance out the texture of this sweet broth so that it's not all beans i'm gonna add some coconut cream here And pandan leaves, if you're using whole leaves, you would just crush it a bit, tie it into a knot and chuck it in. I'm going to use a bit of pandan powder in here. If you don't have either, just leave it out. And I'm going to add a bit of salt and lots of sugar. So, pinch of salt. As far as the sugar amount, um, it's a little bit arbitrary uh, depending on like, I think the Chinese generally like to be a little bit more light-handed with the sugar, right? But otherwise as a kind of general guide, you want maybe like about two-thirds the weight in sugar to the weight in like the beans, okay? So if you're using 300 grams of the mung beans or green beans, then 200 grams or so of sugar would be about right. A bit more of the sticky rice. So this usually takes hours and hours to do, all right? Because like I said, you want to 
pre-soak the beans for hours and then you want to simmer it on the stove and then add the sticky rice and then simmer it for longer. But because I'm using a pressure cooker, I'll just shortcut a lot of things here. Let's taste test this. Tastes perfect. Let's serve this up. So you've got the bowl here. This is good to go as is, but how it's often served in Penang, apparently, is with a dollop of sticky rice on top and with some of the coconut cream that's been simmered with a touch of salt. So there you go, pretty simple. Uh, doesn't take long, especially if you've got your hands on a pressure cooker. Even if you don't though, just make sure you soak the beans for about eight hours and then simmer it and then add the sticky rice halfway through and, um, and then cook it up with everything else, right? Simple, delicious, definitely worth a try. I'll see you next time. So, first impressions of Penang, what do you say? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle? Thumbs up. Well, wow. the food has been really good. The food's been really great. To be fair, the food in all of Malaysia is really great. <laughs> it's nice. In KL, you see tourists. In That's Penang, true. you see backpackers. Yeah, you're right. Right? Dreadlocks, couple tattoos, sunburn, walking slow. <laughs> this is a backpacker's place. I've had a good time so far.